Hi, this is Niall from windowsnoop.com and this is part five of my MBAM BitLocker management video series with Microsoft Endpoint Manager, Configuration Manager, version 1910, which was the first current branch release to have MBAM integrated as a feature. So this video is gonna be short and we're gonna talk about key rotation. But what is key rotation exactly? Key rotation is where uh, let's see. First of all, I'm just going to point you to this blog post I did called Want to Learn About MBAM Integrated with Microsoft Endpoint Manager Configuration Manager. You can find it on nilebrady.com. If you scroll down a bit, uh, you'll see there's some guides and there is one called How Does Key Rotation Work in MBAM Integrated with SCCM. So if you open that one up, it will give you details about, well, what is key rotation and how you can see it in action. But this video is going to show you how it works. All right. So key rotation is an automatic process that occurs when the help desk reveals a key to a person that's calling the help desk. It's a security measure to avoid either a rogue help desk admin using that key to gain access illegally or otherwise to uh, someone's computer. The key rotation uh, ability does not take place when you use the self-service because the self-service is you unlocking your own device using the self-service application. But the help desk is another person providing you the key to your locked device and that very fact makes it much more of a security risk. So when you call the help desk and you get a key, the key on your device will be rotated. So let's see that in action. But before we do, we'll need to, to just have a look at a, a device that is already encrypted by MBAM. And we have this one right here. This was forcefully encrypted in the previous video. And if we look at control panel and bring up the configuration manager client agent, you can see that the enforce MBAM uh, encryption configuration baseline is compliant. And that's the two registry keys in the previous video. And we have our MBAM policy, which enforces the, um, the algorithm encryption method, etc. That is also compliant. So the two configuration baselines are compliant this device is bitlockered as we can see fully encrypted there's the bitlocker icon on the disk and if we do this manage bde protectors get c put the c drive we can see the numerical password here and the password itself all right so those two things are going to change when we reveal the key via the help desk. So can, can we understand where, why would we be prompted for a key in the first place, the BitLocker recovery key? So let's force that, all right? So what we'll do is we'll just power off this VM. Power it off. Actually, before we power it off, let's just do this. We are gonna take a screenshot of that key just so that we can see that it did indeed rotate all right so let's power it off <clears throat> and shut it down the reason i'm going to shut it down is i'm going to change something in the bias and by changing something in the bias that's enough to trigger bitlocker to yeah to throw a fit and prompt us for the recovery key so I'm going to go into the VM settings and if I look, for example, at TPM security and let's just disable secure boot. I think that should be enough to trigger uh, the BitLocker recovery screen. So let's have a look at that, shall we? And there it is. So there's the recovery key ID 3E0026FF and so on. Let's jump over to the Config Manager server and log in. 
And before we reveal the key via the help desk, let's just have a quick look in uh, the database. And let's do this. Oh, in the wrong place. So DBO recovery, DBO. Here it is, and let's run that. Okay, so now we have a bunch of data. We can see the recovery key ID, and here's the one in question, as you can see right there. So that's the one that we saw the BitLocker recovery screen for. And if you look here at the disclosed uh, column, um, this one has not been disclosed yet. So there's the date and time of when this key was scrolled into the database. And there's the recovery key ID and the recovery key is obfuscated, but that doesn't matter. So now that we know it's in the database and it is listed as not disclosed, you can see that there, uh, let's go and disclose it via the help desk and see what happens. So let's go to another client. And on this other client, we'll log in and we will uh, open up the help desk. And let's do this. So we're logging on to the help desk and I covered this in part three of the video series. So if you want to learn about how this all works, look at that part. So what we're going to look at here is drive recovery and we can put in some information. Uh, the ones with the red star are uh, mandatory. So we want to recover access to an encrypted drive. That's exactly what we want to do. So we need the key and I took a screenshot of that here. So let's see if we can use that. If I can zoom in a bit like so. Okay. So that's 3E00, 3E00, where is my screenshot? 3E00, where did it go? 3E0026FF, 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 do we have enough? 3E0026FF, yes. And we need to give it a reason. So we'll say bias changed. All right, so we're gonna click on submit. And what we get here is the drive recovery key that should allow us to unlock that client. So if we go back to the client that has the problem. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Let's free up some RAM, shall we? I need more RAM in this uh, lab. Uh, that's probably why I've got a server running that should not be running. <clears throat> okay, this one only has 32 gigs of RAM. It is a Lenovo P1, an absolute fantastic beast of a machine for running my labs on. However, uh, it needs more RAM as you just saw. So 64 gigs would certainly be nice. Anyway, where were we? Uh, we need to find our client, this one. and. Start it up, and it's prompting for the recovery, the recovery key for this drive, and we have that here. So let's move this one aside and see can we do this in some way that will work with the video. <clears throat> so how about if I no, I can't copy it. That won't work. So one seven five because I know what I'm like, typing in numbers and so forth. Uh, not so easy when it's like this on the screen. Uh, if I try it like this, one seven five, sorry, one seven three five eight zero zero one eight eight six five and uh, six four eight five four nine two four zero eight six seven. 
four, four, five, seven, eight, six, two, seven, seven, four, seven, five, three, four, four, eight, eight, three, six, six, five, six, six, five. Okay, let's hope I got it right. Did I? Yes. All right, so that's going to boot up into the OS, and then what we're going to do is verify if the key has actually rotated. And also we're going to look in the event viewer. And after we're done with that, we will uh, check on the config manager server to see if the new key has been escrowed by MBAM, but also uh, to see if the disclosed column has a one beside it. So there's a bunch of th things we should see with key rotation and I've just named pretty much all of them. So let's first of all, have a look and see, has our, has our key ID changed? And it should, both the numerical ID and the key itself should be different. Manage BD protectors get. Protectors get C. Okay, so that has not changed yet. So it's waiting for MBAM. That's what it means. So if we go to the event viewer, what we should see is that the event viewer will show an event ID 30 when it rotates the key on the client and then scrolls it up to the database. So that's what we're looking for here. So we'll open up the MBAM logs. And they're just down here. We're interested in the operational logs and we don't see event ID 30 yet, which means that the MBAM client has not rotated the key on this device yet, but it will. It will. So let's check again. And again, and again. And if we look here, it's 902 is the last time. Okay, so we've got another phone, one. I think it's coming any moment now. 916, that's now. So we should see it. There it is. So there's the event ID 30, and that means that it has actually rotated the key on the client and we can verify that very quickly now remember this is the old numerical password sorry numerical id and here's the password and let's do that and there you go it has rotated the uh, id and password otherwise known as the recovery key so now if we go to the database in config manager what we should see when we uh, run this query again, what we should see is, let's scroll this up a bit, with more data now. So this was the old recovery key ID. And as you can see, a new one has been added underneath it. And exactly as I said, it has been disclosed. So you can see within Config Manager's database for MBAM, this column is marked one to inform us that that key was rotated, right? So this is very good information and there's even reports that can verify who uh, revealed keys. We'll look at reports in another video. This was all about key rotation. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one. Thank you.